Hey there, Scorpio, Sun, Moon, and Rising. It's time to have a look and see just what is going on when it comes to your month of January 2022 and your astrology. Just a quick heads up, if you happen to be watching this prior to the 15th of December 2021, you may want to consider signing up for my special two-hour webinar all about the major astrological and energetic shifts of 2022. And that's on Wednesday, December 15th at 5 p.m. Pacific Time, U.S. and Canada. Now, if you can't make it, or you missed it, I still have the replays available for purchase and those will be up the day following the event itself. So stay tuned there. So what's going on when it comes to January? Just a quick reminder before we really delve in, we are still dealing with uh, Venus retrograde. Venus will be retrograde through the 29th of January. And I know we talked about that in the December monthly, as well as Venus retrograde got a video of its very own, but for the sake of new people, I thought I would throw this in here. So Venus retrograde, remember, is all about challenging, clearing, and solving issues that already exist in that particular house or particular area of the chart. In this case, it's in Capricorn, your third house of communications, pacts, promises, commitments, contracts, and your peer group. And this is where a lot of you Scorpio people are going to find that we have to do a bit of a check every once in a while when it comes to who we are associating with, networking with, forming alliances with, or what alliances have we formed, commitments have we formed, contracts and associations do we already have that actually have their roots in you know maybe uh, unstable or volatile or just all in all unsecured conditions or maybe unhealthy or untruthful stories or misinformation this can be a very strange month for a lot of you scorpio people because we are also going to be unraveling a lot of veils and unraveling a lot of cases of mistaken identity the key words for Venus retrograde are volatility, insecurity, escapism, and instability. And so a lot of untruths and a lot of things that maybe have gotten their start because of that or rooted in those experiences are going to be revealed. Remember, Venus is putting pressure on the cracks that are already there, so we do something about it, right? It's going to be uncomfortable for everyone, but Venus retrograde always favors those who cooperate with the solution process and solving in the highest interest of all concerned, creating a sustainable positive shift. So keep that in mind as well. Now we also have the sun in Capricorn for the first half of the month with all of that lovely attention, enhancement, and support coming into your third house, really taking the edge off of that Venus retrograde experience. We are attracting a lot of maybe new connections, new highly capable people, as well as drawing closer members of our peer group that really shine to create a whole new sense of maybe community, of a vocational or personal support system, a lot of new secure contacts, and a lot of new reliable resources in the social sense. This is, however, going to create a musical chairs experience for a lot of you Scorpio people with a lot of people coming in and a lot of people going out. A lot of new contracts, a lot of new commitments, a lot of new pacts being made, and a lot of old ones getting severed and also neutralized beyond recall. However, with the Sun in Capricorn, it is in the interest of setting you up for success that will come as opposed to success that was merely promised. And so a lot of you are going to find a lot of binding agreements that you're in, a lot of associations that you have are going to be in flux this month as the better displaces that which needs to go. We also have Mercury in Aquarius direct the first half of the month in your fourth house of home and family, the domicile, home economics or the home economy. 
And Mercury is the planet of communications, haste, and speed. And so we are speeding up developments and speeding up progress towards a goal or towards some kind of accomplishment we are trying to realize either for ourselves, for our family, or for our chosen family, or a home-based business operation. This is a time where a lot of you Scorpio people that may have been struggling with something that's been maybe uh, progressing very, very slowly, or you've been encountering a lot of resistance or a lack of cooperation from people around you, that you're going to be magnetized to more help and to resources and to avenues that are ultimately going to really accelerate, right? It's that accelerating fo uh, focus here, really accelerate the payoff and pay out a lot of a lot of hard work that you've been putting into this area of your life since January of 2021. This is also a time where you may notice a shift in the communication processes with family members, opening up lines of communication, as well as evolving them. We also have Mars in Sagittarius in your second house of earned income, employment, your finances, and anything to do with your values and value system for the first half of the month anyway. And remember with Mars, that planet of action, passion, energy, that driving force, the obstacle clearing force in any kind of income earner sector such as the second house you're going to be in a space where you're going to be very, very busy. We have a lot of overtime opportunities and a lot of you Scorpio people potentially burning the midnight oil or burning the candle at both ends. However, this is a time where you are also really noticing that you are becoming not only a lot more secure, but your wallet is getting fat off of a lot of these extra hours. This is also a time where a lot of you are getting a chance to drive forward some kind of professional agenda that you feel is really calling you to be able to segue into a different lane when it comes to your employment situation or how you're doing business. We also have a new moon in the first half of the month on the 2nd. This new moon in Capricorn in that third house of communications, pacts, promises, commitments in your peer group. And so with a new moon, we're always talking about new beginnings, new cycles, seed planting, and starting new trends. And this is going to be a month where a lot of you are getting a chance to migrate into a completely different social culture when it comes to not only your peers, your colleagues, your collaborators, but your professional and personal network in general. This is a great time, especially for those of you that may be feeling like you are ready for something more cutting edge, to you actually hit the ground running with that in a completely new direction. This new moon is also a great time for you to maybe debut, announce, or put out some kind of publishing project, a change in the way you want to brand yourself, or maybe even call in new peers or bring closer to yourself, as we saw with the sun, those that you consider to be strong allies to form a completely new sense of unity and camaraderie around you because it's going to be very highly effective. This new moon is also going to overwrite some kind of contract or long-term agreement that you have been living with or living under or living in spite of for some time. It's getting overwritten and then replaced with a whole new normal, as it were, or a whole new commitment, a whole new agreement that I feel is going to be a lot more free. It's not going to be as binding, and this could apply with anything, an employment contract, a lease, or maybe even something that you've got going on as a more formal or, or legal situation outside of those areas. When it comes to the second half of the month, got a bit of a change in flavor. The sun moves into Aquarius, that fourth house of home and family, bringing the attention, enhancement, and support to doing a lot of improvements to systems and structures that maybe have not been getting a lot of love or getting a lot of work or brought current in recent or less recent history. Because with the sun in your fourth house, this is a time where your whole family situation or a lot of family dynamics 
are really getting worked over so that they can function in a much more healthy and secure way. The sun bringing attention enhancement and support is all about facilitating a lot of growth in relationships that may be stuck in the past or old issues that have maybe had way too much of a say in our present and doing a lot of healing of even relationships that maybe have become fractured or maybe distanced in some way. If it's not with your natal family, it may also be with an extended family, the family that you have with your partner and your kids, or possibly even your chosen family, however that applies to you. And that's going to be with you the second half of this month and the first half of February. We also have Mars in Capricorn, the second half of the month, that third house, the peer group, pacts, promises, commitments, and communications, really getting that on uh, really just double, <laughs> triple for you, uh, quadruple even for you Scorpio people. When Mars goes into our third house, however, it's a very, very cool um, champion kind of vibe because with Mars in the third house, you are getting hooked up by a lot of people in all kinds of maybe strange circles as well as unsuspected uh, good news coming through people that you didn't think had the resources, the power, or the ability to assist you. Because when Mars shows up, our peer group shows up. And whether these are new people that are coming in to assist you with a big lift, or these are people that you already know are true blue that are now coming into a level up or a power up of their own being able to help and throwing their weight behind you, you are going to be very much stacked with a strong entourage. You're also going to find that with Mars in the third house, you're getting a chance to have a lot more of your voice, your influence, and your own intentions carry farther in your social network. This is a time where you can start to actually maneuver a lot of trends to change in directions that you would rather see them go in the highest interest of all concerned. This could, however, be a time where there may be some rivalry, some arguments, and some, you know, butting of heads. So be careful, because with Mars in the third house, we, we ourselves can also be a bit too hardcore or a bit too fierce in the way we communicate. So make sure you only do that when you want to and not on accident. This is also a good time for those of you that have been looking to contest or break yourself out of some kind of binding agreement or something that has been attempting to hold you or has succeeded in holding you or locking you in a space that has stagnated for far too long. If you're looking to break free from a tie that binds, this is one of those aspects that are really help you out. Now we also have a Mercury retrograde that starts in the second half of the month. Uh, from the 14th through the 25th, Mercury is retrograde in Aquarius, your fourth house of home and family. And from the 25th through the beginning of February, he is in Capricorn, that third house of communications. With Mercury retrograde in the fourth house, this is going to be a time where a lot of you uh, uh, Scorpio people are getting a chance to actually go back and undo a lot of trends or undo a lot of things that have their roots either in your childhood or possibly even in the past relating to your parents or things going back even you know just in the family trees history because we're getting a chance to amend the soil around our household this can actually be a very liberating time especially if you feel like it has served nobody to carry on in those ways and you may also find that while you're doing this you're you're also recovering a lot of beautiful assets, beautiful opportunities, and even chapters of your life in your history that you can actually integrate into the home you are building or have for yourself right now. This is also a time where a lot of you may be reconnecting with a lot of elements from your childhood, passions or talents, uh, again, old resources or assets or even old connections or even fa you know um, family connections, again, that we didn't even know were there. It's all about rewriting your history and getting to know your history the way it can be and the way it should be versus the way it has been. It's a very, very powerful rewrite of how you look at yourself and how you've come up in the world. 
We also have Mercury retrograde in the third house doing much of the same when it comes to how you connect with others, how you socialize with others, and how you handle certain um, understandings of the way you relate to people and the stories you've believed and the communications that you have received, not only from your peer group, but about certain choices maybe that you've made or commitments that you've made in the past. We are fleshing out stories that were not told in their completion. With Mercury retrograde and a lot of these new revelations, especially between the 25th of January and the beginning of February, you may be reevaluating a lot of decisions not only that you've made, but conclusions you've arrived at about big choices you've made in your life's history. And you're getting a chance to consider giving yourself another road to travel down. You're, it's almost like you're getting a chance to do some time traveling and rewrite a lot of decisions so that your present is a lot more smooth, rewarding, and just ultimately rearranged to be a perfect fit for you. Finally, we have a full moon in Cancer in your ninth house of higher education, government legal proceedings, travel, as well as culture, your spiritual path, and your spiritual practice. And a full moon is always about culminations, climaxes, and transitions. And this is a big mover. It's a world mover for you Scorpio people. This is a beautiful time for those of you um, who are interested in actually getting yourself out there, out of your bubble, out of what you have considered to be uh, maybe the limits of your own personal territory, whether this is professional territory, social territory, cultural territory. In fact, with a full moon, you know, from the 17th of the month through the very beginning of February, a lot of you are going to find that a lot of limitations that have been imposed upon you, whether it's imp imposition on your ability to maybe access certain things in your professional life, your field, uh, certain markets you would like to work in, or certain spaces you would like to visit, travel to, move to, live to. A lot of those limitations are purging, and you are actually more free to move and segue and adjust your course however you want. This is also a time where you will find that with a full moon in the ninth house, a lot of you are going to go through some powerful level ups as well with a spiritual skill or spiritual practice that make it that makes it all the more real for you. And I'll just leave it at that. So that's what I've got for you all. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. You know I appreciate it. And should you ever wish to get a session with me, go on ahead to my website. It's integrativemysticism.com.